Kia ora koutou katoa. Today I'll be providing an update on the traffic light settings and the work being done to prepare for an outbreak of the Omicron variant of COVID-19 in New Zealand. Yesterday afternoon, ministers met to discuss the traffic light settings throughout the country. Following public health advice, Northland will join the rest of the country in orange at 11.59pm tonight. The rest of the country will remain at orange. Vaccination rates have continued to increase in Northland and they're now at 89% first dose and 86% second. In addition, the easing of the Auckland boundary over summer has not driven an increase in cases in the Northland region. In fact, the changes in boundary have not caused an escalation in cases anywhere in the country. This has been as a result of three things. Exceptional vaccination rates, our public health teams continuing to stamp out cases when they find them, and the COVID protection framework working as intended. All have come together to reduce the spread of Delta and leave us in one of the best positions in the world to fight Omicron. That then brings me to the challenge of Omicron. This stage of the pandemic is different to what we have dealt with before. Omicron is more transmissible. That is going to make it harder to keep it out. But it will also make it more challenging to control once it arrives. But just like before, when COVID changes, we change. And we are in a solid position to do that. We have the data and evidence from the experience of other countries to make the best decisions we can based on what we are seeing elsewhere. And what we are seeing is that for most people, Omicron will be a manageable illness, but not for everyone. Some people will need hospital level care. That's why our strategy continues to be to minimize and protect. That means we won't stop Omicron, but we can try and slow it down so that rather than dealing with a tidal wave of cases, we work hard to keep cases as low as possible so our health system can manage and provide the care that people need. To slow it down, we need to be on guard and ready. And that is why we will remain in orange. We continue to work hard to keep Omicron out of New Zealand and we've caught a number of cases at the border. We're using our tried and true methods of maintaining high levels of testing, of contact tracing and isolation to prevent it taking hold in the community. But as in the past, we may not know initially when COVID has moved beyond our border into the community. But Orange helps provide some protection when it does. And in the early stages, this will be important. Once Omicron arrives, though, we will need to step up further. That's why I'm confirming today that when Omicron enters into the community beyond border-related cases, the whole country will move into red within 24 to 48 hours. We know from other countries that Omicron can take as little as 14 days for cases to grow from the hundreds into the thousands across the country. It is important to remember though that red does not mean lockdowns or regional boundaries and business remains open. What it does mean is immediately increasing our use of masks, changing the way we interact in hospitality and reducing gathering sizes in order to slow Omicron down. But getting our public health settings right are not the only things that we can do to prepare. We can also vaccinate. This week, five to 11 year olds became eligible for vaccines. And importantly, everyone who's had their second dose of the vaccine four or more months ago can now receive their booster. The evidence tells us that while two doses of the vaccine makes a huge difference to the Delta variant, it's the booster that will help get us through Omicron. And it will help us in critical ways. While many people who become infected with Omicron will not get critically unwell, others will. The boosters reduce the severity of illness and means you're much less likely to end up in hospital than if you don't receive a booster. 
And that will be so important in making sure our system can manage what comes our way. Not many countries have had the chance to roll out a booster before Omicron hits. We have and we are. It's an opportunity we need everyone to take up. These are the things we can do to prepare, but there's also things that you can do as a Fano. Just like before, anyone who's a close contact of a COVID case will need to isolate. And obviously, if you get Omicron, you'll need to be at home for a period of time. We're working hard to make sure people who may need support through this period, be it from healthcare or social services, have what they need. But for the most part, people will be able to support themselves. So we're asking that you think about what you'll need to stay at home for a period of time if you or a family member is infected with Omicron. And while you prepare, these are the things we're doing to make sure we are ready for what we've seen abroad. Omicron's high transmissibility has seen large case numbers internationally. Well, while we're better placed than most countries to minimise the spread of Omicron, we will have higher case numbers than we're used to seeing or have experienced before. That volume of cases but also the fact it is a less severe illness for most, means we will manage cases differently and focus on reaching those who are the most vulnerable. We are preparing a graduated system for case management for different stages of the pandemic. We're also doing work to ensure that essential services are able to continue operating in a high transmission environment by using more frequent testing. There are examples where we already use regular testing in this way in our healthcare settings and we're looking to ex expand these protocols. Currently we use PCR testing as our primary way of identifying cases. We have the capacity to undertake 40,000 tests a day without any strain on our system. We know that with wider spread this system will need to change though. Here, Cabinet has already established several principles for testing in the future. They'll be focused on those who are symptomatic, vulnerable, essential workers and close contacts. They will be free. I repeat, testing in New Zealand for COVID-19 will be free. They will be available locally. Rapid antigen tests will be used more widely. They perform best when rates of COVID are high, such as during the peaks of transmission other countries have experienced with Omicron. Currently, we have 4.6 million rapid antigen tests in the country and tens of millions of uh, rapid antigen tests on order. With this number, we can maintain our testing principles. To summarise though, every day without Omicron here is a day we can continue to prepare, but we need your help. This is going to require a team effort, just as it has at every other stage. We need everyone to think about how they can prepare. For families, make sure your vaccines are up to date and everyone who is eligible is boosted. Think about what you need at home if you're required to isolate. Business, think about PPE and distancing in your workplace, as well as how you can support your workforce to get a booster. Think about contingency planning should parts of your workforce need to stay at home. And familiarise yourself with the leave support scheme that gives financial support while people are isolating. But to everyone, we've experienced large change in this pandemic before and we are on the cusp of that again. But we don't need to be fearful. We do, however, need to prepare. We're well placed to take on this next challenge because we've always put the important things first, and that ultimately is one another. We're now happy to take the questions. Jason, 